All right, welcome everyone. Sounds like this is working. Um, glad to have you here at Extending Kubernetes 101. Uh, I'm Travis Nielsen. I'm a developer uh, for Quantum Corporation, uh, working on the Rook project. Uh, I've been working with uh, custom resources in Kubernetes for about the past year uh, while working on Rook. Uh, so I'll tell you some about my journey along the way, and, and then we'll, yeah, we'll walk through some, some examples here about getting started. All right. So first of all, I mean, this is really the first talk um, after a great keynote this morning by Yen on extensibility, what you can do with it in, in Kubernetes. Uh, so I encourage you to, to look at these other talks today. If you don't, didn't learn what you need to from this presentation, there's lots of other opportunity today. So yeah, a lot of great talks that, that I hope to go to as well. So agenda, um, since this is a 101 course, I uh, wanted to start off by, well, why would you want to extend Kubernetes? And then how would it happen? What are the patterns surrounding Kubernetes? And, and then let's just get right into the code. You know, that's what I do for my day job. I write code. And um, so that's why I want to work, work through my slides pretty quickly uh, so we can get to that, that demo. At the end, uh, if we have a, a couple minutes for q and I'll look forward to your questions. Uh, first of all, the most important uh, pattern that I believe Kubernetes has gotten right and why it's successful is because uh, resources are declarative. If you want to create something, you say, you know, I'm going to just declare it. There's no code, code required. You define your, your manifest in YAML, usually, and Kubernetes will go create it for you. Um, you know, for example, you want to create a namespace, you say, I'm going to create a namespace. Its kind is this, and its name is this. Okay, simple. You can't get much simpler than, than that. Any kind of resource you want to create in Kubernetes, you can do with a declaration. Another example, a pod. You know, a pod is the most basic uh, resource that allows you to run code in Kubernetes, any application you want. So I say, I've got a pod. Um, here's my container, and here's the image you want to run, in this case my Hello World 1.0 um, container. And boom, you have a container. Kubernetes goes and starts it for you. So then you start to ask the question, well, what happens if I want to run my own type of thing? What do I do? Well, I, I can create a pod that goes and runs my application, but what if I want to declare my own type of resource? What do I do? Well, Kubernetes, the Kubernetes team has done a great job of making this very natural and a very um, integrated thing. So they have this concept called custom resources, uh, CRDs, uh, which you can define and will follow exactly the same pattern as in Kubernetes. Uh, last year, as I was uh, working with custom resources, uh, known as third-party resources at the, at the time, um, I felt like I had this light come on, like, oh, that's what they're for. I can define my own types and I can um, go write code that backs it up. But fundamentally, I get resources in Kubernetes that are my type that anybody else can use, and they're treated the same as any other type or resource in Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, big light that came on for me. So there are lots of, you know, it's a, it's a pretty new concept as far as you know, how you know, plugging into Kubernetes and uh, last year at KubeCon, uh, a couple of examples were announced. The etcd operator was one of those. Um, and that's the first example that I found for, for custom resources. So I just thought I'd start there. What does that look like and why did they create it? So I went to their GitHub page and, and extracted their, uh, an example of their CRD. So just some things to point out from, from this example. You see, okay, they've defined an API version that Whoops, is, it's just, it's their own. They define, okay, they're from coreos.com. They, they define their version, v1 beta 2. They've got their own kind, it's an etcd cluster. Um, and, but when you create this thing now, uh, me as the user, I get to decide, well, what's my etcd cluster called? I give it a name. And these other properties in here are very specific to the etcd cluster. You want three uh, of their etcd servers, and here's what version. And now their etcd operator is going to go orchestrate um, the etcd cluster for you. You declare it, and then they go make it happen. 
And as a consumer of an etcd cluster, you say, wow, this is great. It's all integrated in Kubernetes in a way uh, that I would expect. Um, another example, Prometheus, follows the same pattern. Um, they have a Prometheus operator that goes and applies these things. Uh, I kind of truncated it, ran out, ran out of some room here. But again, everything down here in the spec section, the bottom half of the, the operator or the YAML there, that's all something that the Prometheus team decided, hey, we need these properties, we'll specify them. Um, our operator will go act on them, um, but you, the user, don't have to write any code. It's just a simple declaration. Uh, on the Rook team, uh, again, same pattern. We define our own type. We have a cluster and our own properties, uh, which I won't get into today, so we can get into the sample. But really, that's the point. We have properties. Uh, you define them. You declare them. And then the code behind it worries all about it and treats them um, as Kubernetes resources for you. So as an example, uh, where we were with Rook is we are working on this distributed data platform. It's a hard problem to solve, and, and we realized, well, we need um, deployment in a way that uh, Kubernetes didn't quite satisfy. We need monitoring. Um, we need to monitor our, um, our cluster to make sure your data is, is safe. We need failover that uh, needs to happen a certain way. We need upgrade. You know, when you have data that needs to be upgraded, uh, the data path, uh, Kubernetes just doesn't know anything about those details. So this, we, we were able to answer all these questions by using the custom resource patterns and an operator to back that up. So a traditional approach, and, and actually where I started was, oh, well, how would I do this? Well, I'll just start a pod. It'll run my service. Um, I'll implement it as a REST API. Um, so create my REST API, great. Um, now I have a service endpoint where whoever needs to uh, configure my service, they can connect to that and they can you know, call my, my REST endpoints and okay, they can manage it. But then I start to think, wait a minute, um, it's not integrated with the Kubernetes API or kubectl. You know, how, would, how, how, would they, how would they create my resource? Well, it's, they have to go to the REST endpoint. And that's just not a native Kubernetes way of doing it. Um, other things like security come up. Well, what if I want to secure my REST API? Well, now I have to go set up, do I have to set up certificates to get an HTTPS endpoint? Um, you know, what, why can't I just use RBAC security um, and do it the, the Kubernetes way? Um, so the traditional approach for us, at least, it, it wasn't a good fit. We wanted to manage Kubernetes resources um, and you know, this just didn't cut, us, cut it for us. So instead of the traditional approach, uh, the extension ap approach, where Kubernetes just makes it, makes it uh, natural. So they're designed from the ground up to say, hey, this is part of Kubernetes. They're built, it looks like, feels like, smells like uh, built-in resources. Again, CRDs use a declarative state. And what that means is that if, if I have a YAML file, um, I can say kubectl create my cluster.yaml. And boom, it'll be created. Um, if I want to change the specification, the properties that are in that YAML file, I can, well, I can do it with kubectl edit, or you know, however I edit, edit my, my YAML files. When I'm done, uh, I can delete the thing, and I can use the name, um, the proper name of my object. I can say delete my cluster and it'll be gone. So it's simple, right? Um, the, but the power in this is that it's, your custom resources can be consistent across all of Kubernetes. If you wanna be taken seriously, uh, be consistent. So that means all the tools, whether it's kubectl or Helm, whether it's the client Go API, whether it's security, um, and, and you know, any other endless number of tools in Kubernetes, um, it's going to be consistent with, with how that works. Um, so again, we've already talked about this. Basically, it's declarative. And behind each of these resources, there's a controller in Kubernetes. The controller is what makes it happen. And Yen this morning um, talked about this. She had a much, much prettier picture than, than me. But basically, 
The controller sits there and it observes for what you want to happen or it waits for you to declare your, your manifest files. The controller will see when you create it. It will analyze, oh, what do you want to change uh, in your cluster? And then it will go ahead and act and apply changes um, in the cluster, whether you want to you know, add a new resource, whether you want to update it, whether you want to remove that, that resource. That is the controller's job to make that happen. All right, so, th so that's the basic Kubernetes pattern uh, that then we'll go through for custom resources. Uh, so I want to walk through what does it take to write code and, and get a sample operator and, and custom resource running. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is so define, uh, you need to design your thing, what, what properties do you want in your custom resource? Um, second, you think, well, you know, how can clients consume my resource? Um, you know, with the, you know, I live in you know, Golang land, um, I want clients to be able to use the client Go API and use strongly typed thing, you know, strongly typed API to say, you know, get or list or delete my objects all with that. So there are, in Kubernetes 1.8 actually, uh, the Kubernetes team uh, created this tool that will generate code for your CRDs so that you will have strongly typed resources. So I'll, I'll get to that in a minute to show you what, you know, what that takes and what that looks like so that you, yeah, generated code. It's wonderful. <coughs> it, it makes it feel again um, like Kubernetes. And you know, the Kubernetes types inside, uh, the built-in types, use these same code generators, as I understand. So the third step, uh, after you've defined and generated some code, you, um, depending on how you want to act or what changes you want to make in your cluster with your resources, uh, you will need to develop your custom controller, or also known as an operator. Um, so we, there's three basic steps to implement. Um, you need to first register the CRD with Kubernetes so that it knows that this controller will be watching and uh, applying these changes. Uh, you need to th implement three simple methods uh, for add, update, and delete. Um, and then you, know, you start watching the CRD. Uh, tell Kubernetes, hey, I'm ready to, to be notified when there's a change here, when you create, um, update, or or delete anything. All right, when you're done writing code, of course you need to build it, and um, that means, uh, in my case, build a Go binary. Um, as shown, shown this morning in the keynote, you can also do it in other languages. Uh, my demo will all be about the, the Golang implementation. Uh, but the, so you build your binary, uh, you create a Docker container with it, and then uh, we'll need to run that. So once you've built it, what comes next at runtime? First of all, since it is, uh, it is a pod that you will need to run, a controller, so we will define its manifest. It will have some RBAC rules that say, hey, I need to access uh, Kubernetes resources, uh, depending on what your operator is going to do, if, it, if it's going to be creating uh, other uh, namespaces or pods or replica sets. It just needs to declare that, so Kubernetes will, um, will allow the operator to do that. Role bindings, um, yeah, define the basic manifest. Second, go ahead and run the operator. It's a simple kubectl create command. No new pattern there. And then when you're ready to actually create one of your custom resources, uh, you just say kubectl create your YAML file. All right, so let's jump right into uh, what, you know, what all this code looks like. We'll, we'll exit the slides and get to the fun part. All right. Dismiss. All right. Is that big enough? All good? All right, we have our sample uh, manifest um, for the, the simplest hello world CRD that I could come up with. Um, so you get, you see all the, you know, the properties here that, that you get to define. So this is myproject.io, that's my project name. I can declare what version 
this is a, the very first thing, so we call it alpha. Uh, I'm gonna call it sample. Uh, you can call it anything you want. We'll call it sample. And then the name <coughs> the, of this instance I wanna create in my sample. And then the interesting part though is when you get down to the spec. So in the spec, we get to define any properties here that we want to consume in our CRD. Hello world. All right, let's change this a little bit uh, to make it a little more interesting. I don't wanna say hello world, let's say hello KubeCon, we're here. And well, we still need a world property, so our world is Austin for the day. All right, so we've defined a simple, simple YAML file. But in this spec, you can have any, any sort of structures, uh, complex structures, lists of things. You know, this is completely flexible as far as what you can do. Well, if you can do it with a YAML file, uh, you should be able to put it in the spec. All right, so now that we have our spec, we need to get into the land of code. So I'm gonna switch over to Golang and see how this translates into Go code. Oops. All right, so I'm gonna switch over. And by the way, all this code that I'm walking through, you can find on uh, our GitHub and I'll have a link to it later for the sample resource. So we go up to types.go. So types.go, now you see the sample spec here. These are all the properties uh, on the go side that I need uh, to read from the, the YAML file. Okay, so we had hello. Now I changed it from the original sample. Uh, so if I want to deserialize that world property that I added, now I have to add world, and it's going to be a type string. And if I want to deserialize it, it's called world in the YAML. And if I put the quotes all correctly, there we go. All right, so we have our two properties, hello and world. Whoops. And yeah, that's all I need uh, to get them into the land of Go. Now there's some other things surrounding this uh, that will be used that you need to declare uh, so that for the code generation as well. So let's look at that now. So the spec is contained by our sample type. So this sample is the same name as, as what we saw at the top of our, our CRD YAML file. So the sample um, has to define a couple of um, standard um, properties, the type meta and object meta. That's what brings us in uh, the name and namespace properties and, and some other things. And then of course the spec is what we what contains our hello world uh, properties. Above the sample, uh, these gen client and deep copy attributes are what we need to add to our sample struct so that we can run the code generation tools to generate the strongly typed um, objects for people to consume from the client go uh, client. All right, so that you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, down here there's a sample list. Um, CRDs, uh, another pattern with them is that you can create any number of them so, so that you can list them. We have a simple list type uh, with some items in them. And again, for code generation, you need to be able to deep copy them. And that's, that's pretty much it. We have our types defined with the code generation attributes. Um, so what's next? For code generation purposes, there's this doc.go, which says what our group name is. That might be kind of hard to see in the, the gray there, but it's called, so my project um, for, for generating the, the package name and things. But one line of code, simple. If we didn't have these um, copyrights at the top, it'd be a lot shorter. Now, let's see, in this file we have about 60 lines of code. So a little bit more just to show what it takes to register. So we've defined our CRD. Now, what does it take to register our type? Now in this library that, that we've got, a simple library that lets you define custom resources and register them, uh, it takes all these properties that you saw in the YAML file will, will be defined here. Uh, and so its name is sample. Uh, when you have multiple of them, you're listing them, you need the plural name, samples. Our group name, myproject.io, our version, alpha, yep. 
th those are all the properties that, that we need for our custom resource. So the operator kit now will, will register those for us. I don't have time really to dig in and there's just kind of some framework around here, these other few lines of code that you can go refer to on, on the GitHub later. Um, but basically, you know, we register these two types, sample and sample list, and Kubernetes will, you know, away we go. Now in our sample project here, we have two other Go files, so after those simple ones. So we've got main.go. We'll just start from the top. Main.go is going to um, create a context, first of all. So the sample client set is what was generated by our, um, by our code generator. Okay, if I look down here, this code for sample client, new for config, this was generated uh, by the code generator. And I'll go, I'll go generate that code actually in a minute after we see the basic code that we had to write to get this going. So after the context, we go ahead and ask our operator kit to create custom resources. So this takes our sample resource and registers it and tells Kubernetes, hey, I'm listening for this object. And now some basic uh, things to watch for signals in the pod uh, to manage the, the pod lifecycle. But then the, the important part is, okay, let's watch for, uh, watch for the custom resource. So this, if I jump into this, uh, and you see I'm gonna watch all namespaces for, for our new resource. So when I s tell Kubernetes I wanna start watching, well we say, I've got some handler functions. I've got an add method, I've got an update, I've got a delete, okay? So here, uh, they'll, they'll be below here implemented. I've got a strong REST client, um, I'm going to, uh, this is the one that was generated, and I'm going to watch this resource. Um, so I tell, tell Go, okay, I'm ready to watch this. Watch my sample. Now to make it a simple hello world application, um, when I add the resource, um, I'm gonna call this helper deep copy, and all I'm gonna do, the simple, it can't get much simpler than just printing to the console or printing to a log file. Okay, so I add the sample, with hello equals whatever. So just a simple go formatted string. Since I added the world property, I'll go ahead and, and add world equals percent s and that will print um, the value of what's in the world. Uh, with the go formatting, I also need to say, oh yeah, give me the spec and the world. And the code completion finds that. Okay, so add will basically just print the values of what I just added. Now in a real operator, I would want to you know, go make some change in the cluster. I would want to go start some pods, start, you know, create whatever Kubernetes resources I need to create. Now update is just gonna be something similar. It's going to update, update from some old to some new value. Um, and delete, again, we'll just print a message. Very simple, uh, basic thing to get us going. All right, so let's go actually get this running. So I'm gonna to go to the command line and, sorry, before I go there, we need to generate the code. So to generate the code, there's a code generator uh, in Kubernetes.io uh, repo where it's going to take the parameter, or take, tell me the, the package name that I wanna generate. So I'm gonna generate my strongly typed client resources in this client package. I'm gonna generate some deep copy methods into this APIs package. And that's where it finds the types that I've defined. And I want it to be a type V1 alpha one. Okay, so let's run this. So code, code gen will run pretty quickly. Uh, generate the deep copy functions, the client sets, the listers, the informers. And now we have generated code. If I go look at my project again, We've got a few new files highlighted in green here. Let's see if I expand this a little bit. You see this deep copy.go, all generated. Um, 
and the client set that's generated. If I just glance quickly into some of these files, you will see you know, we've got a sample.go and it has all these, it generated this interface and the implementation for them so that I can create, update, delete, get list, watch, all of the standard um, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes calls that I need to work with, with the resources. All right, so we have generated code, a piece of cake, right? The next thing I need to do is take my Go code and, and compile it. So let me go um, make sure I get the right command here. Now, if I didn't make any typos, this should complete in just a few seconds, uh, and I'll have my, my Go binary. All right. Okay, and after we're done building this, I'll just give that a minute. I'll come back here. We need to build the Docker container. So in the sample here, we go look at the Docker file. Uh, this is about as simple a Docker file as you can get. I'm just gonna say from scratch, add my new Go binary to the local bin path. And then when, when this Docker container is launched, it's gonna simply launch my sample operator. Let's go see if this is done. Okay, the Go build succeeded. Now I need to run the docker build command, which I'll get over here. All right, docker build. I have my container now, version 0.1. And I'm going to, now, now I need to get it into my, my cluster. Now I, didn't, I didn't publish it uh, anywhere, so I need to copy it into my Minikube environment. Um, So I take my container, put it in Minikube, which I have running locally. I didn't want to trust the, the network here at the, at the conference. Um, now I have my container there. So just to make sure I'm running, okay, my Minikube is running, I have one node, and now I'm ready to roll. Uh, in my, the first thing I need to do now is run the operator uh, container that I just, just loaded. So if I go back and look at the operator YAML, I uh, don't have time to look at this really, but the operator YAML defines my RBAC uh, settings. Um, the resources need to get list, watch, create. Um, since I'm watching those, I have to request that, uh, that, um, that privilege. I've got cluster role bindings, service account. Um, this just makes it all work when I run the operator. But the, at the end of the day, I'm going to run a container which says run my sample operator version 0.1. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I could kubectl create sample operator, it created my cluster role, my service account, my cluster role binding, my deployment. Um, let's run it, it's running. Now if I say get pods, just to make sure the operator started. Good, so my pod is running. Um, and what it's doing at this point, it's registered my CRD and it's watching for me to create one. So if I look at my CRD, I've got this sample resource YAML. So again, my sample resource is going to create my sample with hello kubecon and, and world Austin. So let's go ahead and create that. kubectl create sample resource. Great, Kubernetes says it's created. Now, let's see um, if Kubernetes what I did with it. So if I say kubectl uh, get samples, so my type is called samples, and I'm gonna say, what samples do I have? So it calls the list method. It says, oh, you've got my sample. Let's look inside the YAML to make sure it's, uh, it's got everything I wanted. And typo, get samples. My sample, yes. There we go. So inside the YAML here, we've got hello kubecon uh, world Austin. Great. Now we still don't really know if the controller responded to it. And if you remember, the controller was simply going to print to the, the log. Um, so we, let's look at that, that log now. So kubectl logs, and I, I put a label on it so we could find it, sample operator. So the log says, yes, added sample my sample with hello equals kubecon and world equals Austin. 
All right, it worked. Um, and then you can do other things like edit. Um, let's see, we'll try one more command here. If I edit samples, my sample. Now we can go in, we can say, hello, KubeCon 2017. Um, and my world is only gonna be Austin for a couple more days, and then I'm gonna go back home to Seattle. So let's say I wanna change to Seattle. All right, whoops, I missed something. VI is not my editor of choice. Oh no, it says it didn't edit it. Okay, let's try again. Well, you get the idea. I'll just change this one. Um, all right, you get the idea. We'll keep the typo. <laughs> all right, it saved it. And now if I look at the log again, uh, it would say, oh, I changed from KubeCon Austin to KubeCon Seattle. And there we go, we have our, our custom resource. And if I did the same thing, I could, I could go ahead and delete, um, delete samples. By the way, you can fully qualify it if something else has a, or else has a name like that, samples.myproject.io, uh, my sample, and it would go ahead and delete, and the operator would then print to the log file again. So there we go, we have a running sample operator that we created from scratch with the, um, with the code generation and everything. And if I had more time, I'd, you know, I would have spent more time on the client to see, well, what do those strongly types look like? And well, we would see that they look exactly like other Kubernetes resources. Okay, so we just got a couple minutes left um, to go back to the slides here. Uh, we went through the demo already. Um, so takeaways. You know, really, CRDs make Kubernetes extensible. They follow all the same patterns that you'll find with other resources. Uh, CRDs you know, really have a low overhead. Most of your time, once you get set up, is, is going to be inside your business logic, whatever you need to do uh, when your resources are created. Um, since I work for the, the Rook team, if you want to see an ex a, a bigger example where CRDs are, in, are implemented, uh, Rook, does, Rook defines five CRDs, actually. We've got cluster, pool, object, file, uh, volume attachment. Uh, all of these are, um, anyway, fully implemented. You can go look for, for more examples there. Uh, Rook, by the way, it's, so it's file, object, and block storage for Kubernetes, um, built on Ceph. Um, we're, we've submitted to, the, to CNCF, and we're excited about, um, about getting that uh, reviewed there. So thanks for your, your support there. Take a look at it, and um, I'll be in the, the Rook booth today if you have any questions. Uh, here's the links to the projects, the, you know, the operator kit, etcd, Prometheus, uh, Rook, uh, just, and there's lots of other examples out there, that, and it's starting to roll. You'll, if you search for operators on, on GitHub, you'll probably find a number of them. Uh, it's a community that's, that's just growing uh, more rapidly all the time. So if you have any questions, uh, here's my contact information. Um, if you want to, to talk to the experts, they're on the Kubernetes Slack at SIG API Machinery, the creators of the, the custom resources. Um, and again, here's the, the Rook site. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>